Graham, it's such a pleasure to have you on CCTV News. Oh, well, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. I had a great opportunity looking at the videos. It is mainly big data illustrating the relations between agricultural and biodiversity. Tell me more about it. Yes, well, so what we're, we're using this time-lapse technology to look at patterns in land use and land cover over time. Uh, how are cities growing? Um, where are cities growing? And then we're also looking at the relationship that that has with agriculture. So um, when cities grow, are they converting agricultural land uh, into other land uses? Are we building, building up those agricultural lands? And, and what does that mean in terms of uh, food production and the mm. environment? What have you found out? We're using these data to tell a story. Um, so Where are the data coming from? These are from satellite images. So it's a collection of thousands and thousands of satellite images that were collected from the early 1980s till about the, uh, the early 2010s. From where? Uh, from around the world, collected with satellites. So these satellite sensors can observe um, what land cover patterns look like around the world. A team from Carnegie Mellon University has put them all together in an amazing display where you can look anywhere in the world mm. and, and see a sequence of what the land cover looked like over time. What we see is that in many places you can see the emergence of, of really large urban areas, megacities. So mm -hmm. one example we give is, is the growth of Shanghai. Um, that's just a really great portrayal of massive urban growth. But we can see that in many other places. We also show uh, uh, the sequence of land cover change in Dallas, Fort Worth, and Texas. Mm -hmm. And we can just see a large amount of urban sprawl in that area. When a city grows, it can expand and, and we can clear the land and, 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 and change the way we're using it. So we might uh, convert a farmer's field into uh, residential development so people can live. And that's really important. Um, but we also have to think about you know, what that means in terms of loss of fertile agriculture cultural lands. It could also go clear forests and then we have to think about what impacts that could have on ecosystems and the benefits that, that people could derive from those forest ecosystems. Exactly how we are seeing the change, the so-called internationalization of mm -hmm. agriculture, how it's been having its impact on us. What we see is that some countries have become very export oriented. So they're using a large amount of the agricultural lands in those, in those countries to produce exports that are consumed abroad. Um, with my research, what I'm doing is looking at all the different trade flows of different food commodities around the world. So many thousands of different trades that are happening. And I'm combining that with data on agriculture from and, and agricultural productivity and using that to estimate how much land was, was required. I calculate that about 20% of the world's croplands are harvested to produce exports that are ultimately consumed in other countries from where they were grown. Yes, indeed. And we are consuming agricultural products that are not necessarily by nature belong to our region. Mm -hmm. And we are cross-season consuming products uh, in agriculture. What would these mean, in, in fact, to both the land on which they are being grown, the different kind of biotechnologies being used, and also eventually on the quality of agricultural products that people are consuming these days? It's so clear uh, that we're, there's enormous benefits of international trade in food. Uh, I'm from Canada, so a very uh, northern cold country uh, <laughs> that doesn't produce tropical food commodities. So I'm able to go to my supermarket and enjoy those, those different commodities all year round, as you mentioned. And that's probably a really fundamental way that uh, as food consumers that we're benefiting mm. from trade. We can use our agricultural lands or use our lands for other purposes if one country might specialize in producing certain types of commodities and then import those that no longer produces. We have uh, increasingly complex supply chains. It can also raise other issues in terms of the environmental impacts of production. Mm. We have to think about food safety. Um, all of those are really important concerns that I think tightly wound up in this question of mm. globalization. Yes, indeed. When it comes to international agriculture, trade, you will see one country will become a huge producer of one kind of agricultural commodities and it's being exported to all over the world. For example, soybean from the United States to China and elsewhere, or the other way around are different kinds of agricultural products. How that's been changing 
our landscape. Definitely we see specialization and, and concentration of certain types of commodity crop production in certain countries. So uh, you mentioned soy. Um, just three countries produce and export more than 80% of soy. Uh, the United States, Brazil, and Argentina. Uh, for example, in the United States, certain states in the what's often described as the Corn Belt uh, yeah. are very, very specialized in producing corn and soy. So we often see those crops are produced in a rotation. So one crop will be harvested and then another will be planted and then harvested mm -hmm. and, and they'll be switched. So that's a very specialized system. And, and if we go back to that looking out the train window that I mentioned, you know, that's really shaped by the demand for those commodities and farmers' decisions to produce them. Another example would be palm oil. Indonesia and Malaysia are massively dominant in producing palm oil, and much of that is being exported. Particularly in Indonesia, it has been an important driver of deforestation recently. Asian developing countries need to have a way out in terms of developing their economy. They want to have an advantage point. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, these advantage points in the future could have an impact on their ecosystem. Mm -hmm. But at this development stage, is there a way out? There's a lot of uh, important uh, emerging uh, trends that, are, that we're seeing that, that hold a lot of promise for the future. Uh, one example would be sustainability certification. So a lot of co companies are committing to only sourcing uh, commodities like soy or palm from farms that didn't uh, didn't cause deforestation mm. to produce those commodities. And so that's trends that we can see that are happening and, and in, in certain areas that I, I think hold a lot of promise. And it also allows us as consumers to be more confident mm. about the, the foods that we're, mm. we're consuming.